Okay, so welcome back everybody. Next, I'd like to talk about probably the most important piece of using Apollo. That would be the prospecting tool, right? So the reason I love Apollo is there's kind of two components or two tools in one, right? You have your prospecting slash enrichment, right? Then you also have your sequencing side, right? So I, I think of it like this. Usually this is split up into a seamless.ai or a clear bit or a zoom info for the new prospecting slash enrichment, right? That's one side. The second side is the messaging. That would be like a sales loft or an outreach, okay? Now, Apollo obviously has both of those, but I want to talk about a component of the first there, which is the net new prospecting. So to run you guys through quickly here, right? There's a couple things I want to touch on. I want to first touch on this. What does this mean right here? This total net new and this saved. So total is what it sounds like. It's all the people, right? Now, if you're on a professional plan, right, you're not able to select more than, I believe it's 50 right now, people at a time. If you have saved contacts, however, you can select up to 50,000, okay? So A, if you want to do a thing, if you want to do things in, in a in a bulk or mess or scaled way, right? You're going to want to work off of this save tab. Now, in order to get people over to the save tab, that's kind of why we're here, right? So first I want to just build a search out here because I think this is important for people that haven't used the tool before. Um, so if you come down here to the bottom left, this looks very similar to the LinkedIn sales nav prospecting tool. So let's talk just quickly about what do we have in front of us here so this is why i like apollo a the reasoning is i have everything that i have done or would want right here in this tool so i'm starting with a group of 261 million right let's just use smartling as an example as i've been using them for this uh for this project here so at Smartling, we reached out to people that were either heads of marketing or, or someone involved on the product side. Let's just stick with the marketing side now, okay? Now, it needs to be people in marketing, but it also needs to be people that have multilingual content, right? So in order to have multilingual content, generally, you have a global audience, right? So I want to reach out to individuals that are at companies that A, have a global audience, B, have decision-making power, um, and B and C have um, a, a, a SaaS focused business, right? Like software and services will will accept, um, but in terms of people that are buying a localization software, it's generally people that are in SaaS. So let's talk about what we're going to look at first here. So one thing I want to mention is always, always, always try to filter on custom fields. If you don't have a custom field here that is relevant to your search, you might wanna add a custom field that's relevant to your search. If you can't figure out what that field is, you either A, have the best built out prospecting strategy that I've seen and maybe not like don't need to take this class, but B, are sacrificing some of the pointedness or specificity of your outreach because you're using the generic fields, right? These custom fields are kind of our gold mine because they allow us to filter on things that normally people don't, right? Um, so I'm gonna ignore that for now because this is a specific example um, and I'm not reaching out to Smartling right now and this is, this is a different user, right? So I don't have the custom fields that I would normally use to filter there. But let's just think about it, right? So I'm reaching out to, let's just say persona, right? We're coming back to here. I wanna say a VP of marketing, okay? Um, and then I wanna say, show me, so show me then, right? all of the individuals that fit this exact criteria. Now, you can see we already did a lot of our filtering here, right? Because this persona included in it is a little bucket of number of employees, industry, management level, and job title, right? So 
this does a lot of the work for us, which is why I really wanted you guys to set up those personas early on, specifically if you have a very well-defined TAM, total addressable market, right? So if your searches are gonna be similar each time, then I would really recommend going the persona route. Let's say that we don't have that, right? So let's say that we need individuals that are in marketing that have an email status of verified that have an employee count of 50 to 100 that are C-suite people, right? So I just went from 127 million or something like that down to 5.6 thousand. And I can be pretty confident here that these are the people that are gonna fit my criteria, right? Now, you'll also notice I did this email verified, right? One thing I will say about Apollo is I would never, ever, and I wish that that would go away. Okay. I would never, um, <clears throat> I would never depend on um, using exclusively like outside of the verified emails, unless you know that the email that you're uploading is correct. I'll give you an example. I have a customer that uses Google Sheets to upload their contacts into Apollo. When we do that, we get a, uh, a different outcome here and it's a, it's a user managed email. Those ones we trust, right? Anything that you're prospecting though within Apollo, I would use the verified hook. So how do we take this from here? This is where this becomes a little bit tricky um, because we're on the professional plan, we're not on the enterprise plan. I would imagine that most people taking this course are gonna be on the professional plan as well. So you can only select up to 50 people at a time, which is a real pain in the you know what. Now, um, I have built a scraper for this for myself. If anybody's interested in that, please reach out to me directly. I'd be happy to send it over to you. But basically it, it automates this motion here. So the selecting, the save, the next page, the selecting, the save, the next page, because I don't have time to sit here and do 50 at a time to get up to 5.6K, right? That would take me, I believe, forever. So, um, once you do that and hit a save, right, they will surface over here with which you can then select all, add to your sequence, go from there. Okay. So, so that was just a quick session on how we prospect in terms of filtering, right? And then kind of what the next step looks like in terms of getting the